Che, get get your seat. What the hell's going on? I need coffee. I need coffee. Oh. Leave that in. Show people how lazy no, you are. No, what? <laughs> See, you're I was checking the, the mic level bump, and the calibration the, of the microphones, bump. you know, matched to our voice. And then you were actually making a 3D printed version of the microphone. Yep. And then... Yeah. And why does the mic keep falling over? Why does this mic keep falling over? Because you bought down? cheap stands. You bought them. <laughs> I didn't told you, you to buy the mics. I didn't, didn't tell you, you to buy these. Huh? Didn't you recommend those stands? He did. I did because they're cheap and they work. <laughs> and they broke, which is why they don't work properly. Well, that's also because you know, Jerry abuses them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jerry, shaking his shame on you. Stand abuse. I don't, I don't understand. Enunciate your name on the phone, please. <laughs> he's like, he's like uh, Jerry. Enunciate? Uh, it's enunciate. Enunciate. En enunciate. 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 I taught him that word. <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled E N U N I. What? Are, why? What? What is life? Hi everyone, I'm Adrian from Radio <laughs> Excellence. As Jay and uh, Jerry, uh, Jay and Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> Jay and Philip, we're from Audio Excellence Canada. Uh, so we're continuing uh, part two of the Pure Audio MS480 SE Tube Hybrid Integrated M. What a mouthful! Nice name. <laughs> what a mouthful! If you had to remember this, you'd never buy it. Um, so we did a part one of this integrated amp um, and that video devolved. So we're doing a part two. Um, part one uh, turned out that the integrated amp wasn't fully broken in, so we decided to do a part two instead. Um, if you look in the description box, we've got the uh, part one linked, so you're welcome to watch it. Um, this integrated amp sells for $16.99. It is made in uh, China. It's uh, rated 50 watts times two. Uh, there are four tubes, 212AT7s, 212AU7s. Um, because it's a hybrid, the output stage, they use four Toshiba bipolar transistors. Comes with a really nice metal remote control, nice and hefty. Um, well made, from what I understand, and apparently the winner of um, uh, one of the uh, most highly regarded stereo magazines in Europe, De Passando, uh, 2017. That's all I know. I don't know why they want it or what the uh, review said. Uh, I've got to see if we can get a translated copy of the uh, review. Um, you might want to actually check out the website. Again, the manufacturer is Peer, P-I-E-R, Audio. Um, and if you Google that, you'll find there's a, um, a group. Um, what do they call it? Uh, past lab lovers or threshold lovers, where they actually did a review. Threshold. Of this. Yeah, threshold. they did a review of this uh, integrated app, and they spoke very highly of it. Um, anyway, sixteen ninety nine. The reason I was intrigued by this, uh, first of all, Richard brought it. Richard's our friend. He's a distributor in Canada. He's also the super agent for Hegel in Canada, among other things, Kaba speakers and Inuos, Inuos, um, Meze headphones. Uh, I want to say Mr. Speaker, but what's they changed their name now to something else? Oh, uh, Dan Clark. Dan Clark headphones. No, just Dan Clark. Dan Clark. Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, uh, it's like changing. It's like changing audio excellence to Adrian Lau. Uh, but he was supposed to bring out a speaker. That's why I was called Mr. Speaker, well, but he never that, did. Speaking of that speaker, what is that speaker headphones. that he's now representing? What's it called? Oh, uh, Audio Neck. Audio Neck. Yeah, from uh, Germany. Yeah, yeah, which is, uh, yeah. Which is yeah. uh, basically a giant Linnaeum tweeter. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to be listening to those and, and, and letting you know what we think. Um, oh, anyway, no. uh, so the reason why I was interested in this integrated app is because uh, lots of you uh, have... Uh, replied that you agree with our assessment of the Hegel line, specifically the H90, because it's relatively inexpensive. It's 2200 Canadian. It really punches above its price class. But many of you have also indicated, look, that's a big stretch for me. Can you recommend something else? So when Richard said, you know, you might want to check this out, and it's $16.99, I thought, well, yeah, let's, let's, let's uh, listen to it and see what we think. Um, so, um, Philip, why don't you start? Well, I love this amp. Um, I would not consider it, you know, audiophile, which is actually good. 
because <laughs> actually delivers on everything that it promises and it doesn't promise more than it can deliver. I mean, that, <laughs> it's sort of a non sequitur, but um, that's important when you're looking at equipment like this. It doesn't promise the world and therefore falls short. It actually promises to deliver a consistently musical presentation, which it does. So it has the best of both worlds. It has tube on the input end and it sounds tuby. And it has that kind of uh, slightly forgiving, relaxed, uh, almost vintage-like uh, tube presentation. But then it also has a fairly, you know, dynamic and punchy uh, transistor bottom end and consistency and coherency. Um, what so, speaker did you listen to with? Olympica Nova One. Okay. So that's a nine thousand dollars speaker, which we used as a kind of like as a house standard because it's a very good speaker. It's not totally crazy priced. Um, but it is a very good speaker and very revealing. So if you if you're if you're if you're looking at that kind of equipment, it's always best to try and use the best of whatever you can find. In this way, it reveals exactly what the equipment is doing. And so when I was listening to this little amplifier, I was struck at um, how much I was enjoying it. I didn't really care too much about trying to analyze every little thing about it, but I was just really it was really 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 enjoyable. Uh, it had that kind of warmth. It had a little, uh, obviously it had a little bit of forgiveness. It had some of that tube open top end, not too much of it, so it wasn't bright or in your face or brittle or aggressive. And uh, even though it has bipolar transistors, which to me have never sounded quite like, well, I don't like them as much as MOSFETs. I mean, that's a bias. So uh, uh, automatically that that's a winning combination in that I, just didn't care that it was bipolar. It was just, it was just, it was really good sound coming out at me. And I hooked up a number of different speakers to it and it all pretty well responded the same way. So um, if there's any reservation about it, it's maybe that it does make everything kind of sound the same. So it has a character. And, but for most people, that's kind of a pleasing quality. Uh, they will not find this thing objectionable in any way. They'll really, really like it. And when you look at it, it doesn't give you the frills like a phono stage and or a DAC, but that's a good thing. So you combine this with like a blue sound and you have a perfect little setup. Just choose a good little pair of speakers. You don't really need that much. It has yeah. a nice warm sound. Yeah, I would agree. Jay? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? I did not expect that from you. Whoa. Well, I told you that before. Oh. God. Oh, well, I was too effusive. This is like this. No, this is like whoop. Because um, I didn't like this one at all. No, okay, good. No. That's fine. You, it's, you're you're um, allowed to disagree with me. And usually we agree on 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 how it sounds. Okay. And then we usually disagree because of our own preference or bias. But so elucidate, please. But I I found I found this bright. You so found it bright. I found oh. it bright. So that's the thing. Um, you with your 19K hearing response. Uh, 19K? I go way above that. <laughs> um, you know, I, I like the value. And like I said, I'm a cheap bastard, just like I said in the previous video. Um, so I definitely like the value that it provides. Hmm. Uh, I don't care where it's, where it's made. I just, I just like it. Uh, when I first played yesterday, uh, I thought the mid-range was, you know, beautiful. I had yep. that mid-range, you know, tube characteristic. So immediately I liked it. But as I was playing tracks, I didn't find it as forgiving. And now I had it with Blue Sound and the Nova, not the Nova, the, the Sonetto ones. Mm -hmm. Right, Jerry? Sonetto ones, yeah. Um, because I thought that would be, you know, that would, that would show, you know, there's a similar price range, right? Yeah. So that would be an example system that someone will have. So that's what I had it set up with. And I found it just on certain songs uh, a little bit, like for example, you know, Joe, uh, Joe Billy or even Liberty by Annette Ashwick. On certain parts of the song, it, it came off a little bit glassy to me and uh, a little bit aggressive um, on the top end. Um, I had no problems with the bottom end. Like Philip said, the bottom was punchy and dynamic and uh, the mid range had that tube characteristic, but it was just a, just that um, upper upper mid range and had a high frequency that was a little bit inconsistent depending on track to track for me. 
And I found that to be quite interesting. At the same time, you know, if this was, I, I thought to myself, if someone wanted uh, this nettle once and liked the mid-range characteristic and the base, um, but wanted a little bit like the gentleman that came in yesterday uh, uh, um, who listened to um, uh, a pair of, what, what did he listen to? The, the Olympica twos? Yeah. And and he loved the sound, but he wanted just a bit on the top, and he was wondering, you know, if he can do that with components. And I told him yes, and you know that would be a good example of you know just just a little bit of that. And uh, the sonata once, as I remember it, you know, for me was a little bit you know rolled off, not rolled off, but you know a little bit more close down to what I'm used to. But with with the pier, it was a little bit more lifted up, a little bit more excitement and energy there. So. It, not for me, but personally, uh, for for people that are looking for that little bit more excitement, like fans of Clipsha P six hundred M's, okay, I, I would advise. But um, again, d- different, different surprise that we had. Different. But you did most of your listening with the Blue Sound, Blue yeah. Sound, and the uh, the Sonata ones. Because but did you hook up the? So I did most of my listening mm-hmm. with Olympica Nova ones mm-hmm. and uh, Inuit Zen Mini, mm-hmm. and the Zen Mini. Oh um, no no so 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 with the Inuit Zen Mini I have no doubt that it would it would actually. So I didn't hear any of that yeah. brightness. I I recommend mm-hmm. the Blue Sound mm-hmm. because I, I I I've used it in many situations. I quite mm-hmm. like it, but not in Maybe that's this where the particular situation. Because, Sometimes it can be a little bit. Yeah yeah because bright. I think I think yeah in in I think that glassy or on kind of it, it, it was a little bit unrefined. And that's how I, I would put it. The hybrid mm. was just a little bit unrefined to my liking, especially considering that it's a tube, um, tube hybrid, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I, I was expecting a little bit more refinement on the top end or a little bit more air uh, instead of that kind of forced, aggressive sound. But that's what I was getting. And uh, okay. perhaps the Inuits will fix that, but then now we're talking well, about... Well, just something, <laughs> a better DAC yeah. than what's built into the Blue Sound yeah. node. Yeah. Because uh, I really like it, especially when I just use it as a digital transport, mm-hmm. um, because you know it's an easy way to get into it, and yeah. then you can always use just a better legacy DAC or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so it's very interesting. Um, they both essentially are saying the same thing, and and I've uh, been able to hear the, this integrated amplifier uh, in both instances uh, of both systems, like uh, what. Philip heard and what Jay heard because Jay's setup uh, yesterday was what I listened to this morning. Um, well, first of all, this integrated arm also really likes to be warmed up. <clears throat> uh, um, right at uh, turn on, it's okay. Let it warm up for a while, uh, at least 30 minutes, and it does uh, substantially improve. And it's interesting because we're so used to, well, at least I am, when the, the odd time that I get a chance to do demos with uh, these days for clients, it's it's a lot of times with Macintosh. And Macintosh doesn't take a lot of warm-up these days using the new uh, transistors. So I'd forgotten uh, um, how much warm-up can actually uh, make um, to the sound. And with both the synthesis and with the Pure One, Pure One, Pure, pure Audio, <laughs> <laughs> The warm-up is quite import, important, so you do want to make sure that it's uh, nice and warm uh, before you um, do any critical listening. Um, but I would I would say that both of them have um, described the sound quite accurately. Once it's fully warmed up, and if you do use a good front end with it, it's a really nice unit. In fact, for the price, it's, it's quite astonishing. Uh, makes me want to experiment with other products in that same price range to see if there's other products that uh, are um, comparable and competitive. But I really like what I heard. Um, uh, when when Villip originally had it set up with the uh, Nova One, um, Sonus Faber Nova One speakers, and the um, uh, Zen Mini, I really liked that. I was very impressed with that. And then this morning when I listened to it, I, I immediately looked at my notes from last time and I remember thinking, it's not as good. Hmm. And then I understood, well, I'm listening to two separate systems. Um, I don't think anybody's going to be buying this 1699 amplifier and driving a $10,000 speaker. But it's good enough that if you did, uh, it would really make those speakers sing. It's a gorgeous sound. Mm, and no. if you use the Sonetto ones, it would still be lovely. I think that, um, yeah, I would probably um, um, be careful with the cables um, 
and uh, uh, maybe even change the source or experiment with different sources just to see what else can happen. Did you say cables? Yes. <laughs> no, more, um, more snake oil. More snake oil. I think that um, so the Sonata 1 is still good. I don't think it was the speakers as much as... Um, um, and but but I think that what it was was the blue sound. If you switch that to the Inuis, yeah, the mini, then I think that would have been actually pretty close to what Philip described, silky smooth and all that. But um, well, it's definitely got enough resolution, yeah. and uh, yeah. that you can tell what mm -hmm. you're listening to. Like you know, yeah. in other words, when you change the source, you can immediately tell that this is that source and this is that source. Right? Yeah. So here's a question: This will be harder for Jay to answer because. Uh, um, uh, he wasn't as crazy about it, um, and of course the system will matter. But did you guys get a chance to compare it with Hegel at all, the H90? Well, we know the Hegel H90 like the back of our hands now. Well, I, I compared it to the 120. Okay. So I, ha I have a really interesting observation about yeah, that. Go ahead. <sighs> so. Well, first of all, how much is the H120? Thirty-six hundred dollars. So three thousand six hundred, almost double the price, more than double. And it's almost as good as a 190, not quite, but pretty close, hmm. right? Um, it's Which is almost as good as the 190. The H120. 120 and the 190 are fairly close. They're only $900 apart. Um, okay, the so, difference... So, so, so for reference, the 120 is 3600 and the H190 is... Is 4500 4, Canadian. Okay. Canadian. And the 120 and the 190 are very close in sound. Uh, is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. the, right. the sonic characteristics are very close. Okay, so go ahead. Um, So I listened for a long time to both the synthesis and the peer. And at that point, I liked the peer more because the synthesis was not broken in. And then I, I said, for sure, I got to try the Hegel, which I love. Like, can I find the Hegel to be, um, uh, for a transistor amp, you know, quite open sounding, a little has a little bit of warmth to it, a little bit forgiving, but grippy in the bottom end, which is a unique kind of, um, um, you know, like that's a unique kind of uh, um, <clears throat> having those two qualities. Usually you don't get the, both of them together. Um, so when I put the Hegel on, I was shocked because a lot of what I don't like about transistor ramps I was hearing, which meant that the other two things, especially the peer at that point, sounded much more like my reference tube system, which I really love. And um, so I was surprised that I found the 120 to be cold in comparison. It did a lot of other really good things, but that, that, that kind of connected warmth that I had experienced with it before in comparison was not there. So um, it just goes to show you tubes are tubes and they can never be replaced. <laughs> Diehard tube lover. Yeah, and I love the 120 as well. It's yeah. I've used it for demos. I've I've, I've loaned it out to uh, customers, and they come back with glowing reports about it. And but just when you compare it and you do with those ABs, it can be sometimes revealed in a way that you perhaps weren't anticipating, and and not in a positive manner. So it, n n you know, there, there's really nothing negative about that amp. It's just. In comparison, it's not tubes. So, so you you so to, to make you live with it. You've had both the one twenty. I would and not change the Hegel for any tube amplifier, because it does a lot of things that are really well. Because it does things that tube amplifiers, at can, least in that price range, can, can never do. Right, I agree with you. But but just, I do agree that the the tubes do have that. Um, uh, silky mid range that the right. Hegels don't have the holographicness and all that. Um, which the Hegels don't have, but again, it's a compromise. No amp amplifier is perfect. Right. And as far as I'm concerned, um, you know, yes, I can have all those things, but Hegel does things that no other, you know, things. So I, it's a compromise I can live with. So I used Simply to listen quite. to Dynaco ST70, that's one of the oh, first yeah. tube amps I ever bought. Yeah. And I loved the mid range. And then I hated everything else about same, it. Same, same. So I had, I had, I had the ST72. And uh, I had actually the preamplifier, the past three, yep. P yeah, with it as well. <laughs> and it sounded dark, dull, but I love the mid range, but I, everything else was like terrible. The bass was horrible. The bass was, the bass was woolly. And I, you know what? I, I, I listened Soggy. to it. I was, like, I was like, oh my God, it feels like it's take, I'm taking a bath, <laughs> right? <laughs> 
And then one day I switched the preamplifier and then my eyes just opened to a whole new world. And I went hunting for new preamplifiers because yeah. I was like, my God. And it was not even a big jump. It was not even a, you know, actually it was similar price range. You let me your, what was that preamplifier that you let me? I forgot. So the little hybrid one? or pre yeah, the little one. I don't know. But anyways, it was a small preamplifier that Philip had kicking around in his room. And he's like, here, then take this, try this. Because, you know, and then I switched up with the past three. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is. I lent you the King Rex? Yes, the King Rex. Yes. It was like an entirely different, you know, system. And I was like, holy crap, that's it. <laughs> and then, uh, and I remember, you know, changing my uh, Dynaco to carry. Right. Carry to amplifier. Yeah, SLI 70s. Something like that. And then. And then I eventually bought the Carry 300B Bomber Blocks yep. signatures. Uh, <laughs> this is all within the, like a week. Oh yeah, yeah. It was a, like within a week because I, I listened to it for the entire week. I'm like, oh my god! Like, I this. But anyways, and then that was like fabulous. And then I got into the world of Macintosh and, and it's down downhill. Anyways, it's, but now you're you're Hegel aficionado. Well, I love Hegel for what it does. But here's the thing. Um, you know what I noticed is. New toys are always exciting. You know, new toys are always exciting. That's why we'll never leave here. <laughs> yeah. New toys are always so exciting. And then Hegel, you know, I've lived with it for the last, and one of the videos that I made is like living with Hegel for three months or something like that. And the excitement dies down. I don't, I don't, I don't think, I, I still stand by everything I said. It's a great piece, right? But I'm not as enthusiastic about it. You're not enthralled before. because it's now become the norm. Because well, And also because when you live with it for such a long time, you begin to nitpick on the things it doesn't do. Doesn't it still at some point, like I know a system, my system is good because I won't listen to it for a little bit and I'll mm -hmm. turn it on. I'll play something that I actually know really well and then suddenly I hear something I have not heard before and I'm connecting it to it in a way that I've not done so before and it's like a new experience. And when it's a new experience, it's exciting and like Hegel sounds like engraved in my head now, mm. you know, like I hear it from outside the room. I can tell it's Hegel. <laughs> yeah, it, it can be that distinct, I yeah. believe. Yeah. Yeah. So coming back to my original question, <laughs> what do you guys think of the Pier 1 versus the Hegel H90? Oh, I, I just answered that. I, I wouldn't change it for any other. Any other they both ones. have strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. I obviously prefer a tube presentation. Um, and I like the fact that the peer is, well, it's 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 five hundred dollars less, so the, which means I can spend five hundred dollars on something else that I can fiddle around with, um, you know, cables. for s cables. <laughs> no, I would borrow them from you. <laughs> you know that, right? I would just borrow them and keep them. Well, my mono price. Uh, uh, oh yeah, mono price. Excellent cable. Excellent cable. Great. We're just copper. kidding, guys. We're kidding. We're kidding. <laughs> Do not send us hate email over mono price. Okay. Okay. Well, because well, that's blue jean cable. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so again, I, I I'm gonna use I'm gonna borrow this from I think it's Jonathan Valen, uh, who who I first came across his writing about this and he describes things as top down or bottom up okay so um, for me the Hegel is more bottom up it's a darker rich um, uh, the high frequencies are, 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 are a bit darker they're not as bright as some electronics um, certainly very dark background um, a denser sound I find the pure audio to be more lit um, but but not bright in any way uh, as long as it's fully warm uh, warmed up. Uh, I it's hard for me for me to make that decision, and that's interesting because they're sort of good from both ends. And mm. and um, you know the, the the difficulty is that when you when you're looking at budget products, in other words, when when you're trying to manufacture and sell it for a certain price, let's say fifteen hundred dollars. Um, it's very difficult to make something really good at that price point as opposed to when you're trying to make something really good at $10,000. There's a whole lot more money that you can put into the circuit and, and parts and, and fuss over what you can do. So when you're talking about a five or $600 retail difference between the two, that's a very big difference in terms of the cost of how to make that product and what parts you can use and so on. And the fact that we're able to compare the two and, and at least for me say that 
it's hard to compare the two. Uh, for me, that's 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 a big compliment. I, I I think that they're both really really good. And you know, if if somebody would put a gun to my head, I I'd say I'd still probably choose the Hegel overall. But um, it would be a hard choice. It's well, not an easy choice. I mean, the Hegel will be more reliable because it's only solid state, yeah. and it does, of course. Give you a few extra things. Yeah, but again, it's not even. I'm not even concerned about the reliability in terms of the question. If I was looking strictly at the sound, um, I would choose the Hegel only because, um, for me, given the the really insane breadth of music I listen to, a slightly darker sound is oftentimes preferable. Um, do you really find it darker, or is it like the background is just so black? No, I do find it a bit dark. It, it's it's not. Um, I, I I it would not be something that I would think of when I think of something very airy and, and okay. very extended. It's not to say again that it's it's you know missing anything. It's just that I find, and you may be right. Maybe it's just the background is very dark, but I do find it. Uh, but you know, you go up the range. There's more uh, air. There's more. Again, that. I'm just looking at the H90 versus mm -hmm. the, okay. the 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 pure audio. Yeah, you know what I think is uh, Anders should add tubes to the Hegel <laughs> and come up with a model that's like you know uh, Hegel H ninety T, you know with the with yeah, just tube. stick it on the top. It yeah. doesn't even have to be connected to just the circuit. Put, just put, just just put an it, LED on you know, it and just light automatically. It it's going to be more warmer sounding. They, they literally airy. Hegel literally does like a decade of you know uh, mm -hmm. testing and revision and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. to design something like that so you, we could see one in about 10 years maybe why 10 years just stick a two i'm serious <laughs> anders do it <laughs> they've 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 concentrated on their integrated stuff it's okay. all fabulous yeah. right yeah. but and 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 they're they're separate even the dac has been around for Here, some time here's a, here's a little secret okay here's There's a little, stuff little secret to engineering okay okay what's that Enders, take iFi's buffer, two buffer, stick it in your integrated, and you're good. You could buy one of those musical fidelity two buffers on eBay for cheap, 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 and use that as an input stage. Yeah, we should, should, do, we should do a video on buffers at yeah. one point. Anyway, I, I want to conclude by saying um, uh, we're not officially a dealer yet, but I think we will be. Um, I'll talk to Richard and, and get all the final details with regards to what, as a dealer, we would want. And it's not about money. It's about making sure there's reliability, there's serviceability, uh, things like that. But if, if all those things check out, um, we will more than likely be a dealer because I'm, I'm quite impressed by this this unit. And, and the fact that we can put it into a, a system comprising of $10,000 speakers and make those speakers sound so good speaks volumes. Because I can't say that, uh, I can't say the same thing about the H90. So that's interesting. So, so where I've had the H90 hooked up to uh, really, really good speakers, I hear limitations of that amplifier. Uh, um, whereas I can't say the same thing about the pure, pure audio. I like that pure audio, uh, um, even in very high-end speakers. So, so that's saying a lot for me, anyway. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, I think we'll do wow. that. Wow. Yeah. First I, time. Well, no. I mean, you know, for, for whether it was by luck or not, when it was hooked up with the. Uh, with the uh, uh, Novas, I was really impressed, and I, I didn't think. In fact, um, I thought that I was imagining things. I thought it was the Sonetto, and then I took a closer look because they sort of looked the same, and then realized that it wasn't. So anyway, that's saying a lot. Oh yeah, you came into the room, you were like, oh, that's the Nova One playing, right? Yeah, that sounded really yeah. So we got just our, our sign to shut up now from Jerry. Right. So oh, gotta, okay, uh, all right. Anyway, <laughs> we talked too long. Adrian, Philip, J, Audio Excellence Canada. If you like this video, please subscribe. Turn on the notification. Check the description box because there's all kinds of videos that we've done in the past that you might be interested in. And um, we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.